it's time for a little bit of a reality check. While we get to live full time in this beautiful RV, we get to go to some amazing places and have incredible adventures. Not every day is all fun and games. And while we're back here in the DFW area, we have to take care of some rather mundane things, I guess you could say, but such is life. So while we're here, we're going to be intentional about enjoying some awesome activities here and seeing the beauty that is around us. So with that also being said, we've been struggling because we have like a mid-range problem. What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> that essentially means that when we get to a destination, we can walk somewhere for RV mm -hmm. or we can take the dually nine times out of 10, sometimes mm -hmm. your truck, depending on where we are. Right. So we can go long range, mm -hmm. we can go short range. Mm -hmm. So we have a mid-range problem. <laughs> First world problems? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but with that being said, we have been looking at different modes of transportation to add to the mix. If you've been yeah. following us for a little while, you know that this is normally where I insert golf cart. We want a golf cart. And while that's true, this is a conversation we've been having since before RV life. We have not come to a consensus in over two years. We have not. Until today. So we're going to go find an adventure, but we're going to take our new mid-range mode of transportation and introduce you to that as well. So the first thing I'm going to point out is that what we're choosing today to enjoy this area is free. You don't have to have a special vehicle. You can walk these trails and it doesn't take all day to get to. So make sure to get outside and do something of that nature for you today. All right. Now, what did we land on? It's a big secret, right? They're sitting right behind me. For that in-between transportation option, we landed on e-bikes. We really liked the idea of a golf cart, but it was so restrictive, meaning we had to have this particular kind of RV to transport it. Where do we store it if we're not using it? Um, just several things, plus it's the biggest and most expensive option. Um, so I guess we could always do like regular pedal bikes, but you know, at the end of a long horse show day, my legs are tired, so we're gonna go for something like that. We briefly, very briefly talked about like one wheels, but let's be honest, I'm gonna fall off of that, probably repeatedly. Uh, so yes, we landed on e-bikes, specifically the electric 3.0. I really wanted something that was foldable, um, and we'll tell you why here in a little bit and show you why that was important to me. But so yes, foldable, we wanted something that's kind of proven. I didn't wanna go with a brand new company and cost was certainly something that we wanted to take into consideration. We went with the brand Electric for several reasons. They had the foldable model that I was looking for. They have adequate weight capacities and power options that we were both concerned with. This company has sold over 400,000 e-bikes in their four years in business, and they're always improving their models. So we were really comfortable with that. They have a great customer service department and they have an excellent philanthropy department, which I'm excited to tell you about later. Now then, as for the bikes themselves, we got the 3.0 folding bikes for both of us. Ryan got the standard, I got the step through, and he got the extended range battery uh, that gets him almost 65 miles, I believe, to a battery charge, which is pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. 
So what are the bikes going to enable us to do? Well, like Lauren said, we wanted to get out and find a new adventure. And for us, not being able to do kind of that mid-range stuff, like longer bike rides, that kind of stuff. So we actually found some new trails here in the Dallas Fourth area that we can get out on. In addition to doing trails and that kind of stuff, it also enables us when we're at horse shows to go a little bit further. So sometimes our RV is not exactly parked very close uh, to where the stalls are and unfortunately sometimes truck parking can be a little rough at some of those things just because there's so many people. So this will enable us to both get around. Plus let's be honest, they're electric bikes, they're just fun. Okay, so just to briefly talk about a few things on the bikes that we wanted to point out that we actually added on, that's a, not a standard thing, is one, I did the comfort seat, and you can see the difference in how big and squishy that is compared to the standard that Lauren has. Also, Lauren has the cargo basket on the back there. Now the cargo pack comes with the front basket as well. She just elected not to put that on. Maybe not forever, but for now. Also, we both have the locks on both of our bikes and then we both added cell phone holders as well. This is exactly why we get out and explore. On our little bike ride we came upon a farmer's market that's open today so we're going to check it out. Now that we're done with our little adventure and the farmer's market, which we didn't buy anything, oh darn it, but Lauren did find puppies. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to kind of transport our bikes. So you can fold them, you could leave them upright and put them on a bike rack. We don't want to do that. We have a toy hauler, so we don't have a hitch in the back because of the ramp door. So what we did is we just went to Home Depot, got these 38 gallon totes. There's two of them here. We don't keep a lid on it or anything because we do fold the bikes up, but then we put them in here. That'll, this keeps them from like tipping over and kind of getting too messed up. And then we'll actually throw a strap over them in our toy hauler space, which we'll show you when we get back. Uh, or when we transport them like in Lauren's truck, we'll put a strap over them this way just to keep them from moving around too much because they are metal in the back. And if they were to slide forward too hard, they could hypothetically break out the back window of them. So let's get them back in. So when we store, we always take our keys out just one of those things, kind of precautionary. Kickstand up, fold the pedals in, and I like to put the handlebars down first. Open her up, fold her in. And there is like a little stand on the right side to kind of keep it up, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Then I just grab from a couple of different positions. I like to grab from underneath the main and in the back. And I literally just put them in. So because Lauren has the step through and I have the standard, they go in a little bit differently. Mine likes to go in tires first, then move it out of the way. Lauren's is a little different. I'll show you that now. Tighten that back a little bit more. So same everything else, I go in the exact same order. But because of this basket, I have to turn Lauren's headlamp a little bit out the other way. Go ahead and fold it. All right, so because hers is lower in the front, we have to put her front end down first, essentially, instead of like what I did with mine, where I went tires first. Uh -oh. And because of that, if you'll swing around here and kind of get the front of this. So because of how her bike situ situates, her handlebars kind of come a little over the top. That's the only difference because of her frame, because it's a step through, it goes so much lower. Just small differences, so you just have to pay attention when you're putting it in to store it. 
or to strap it down that if you're going to use this tote bin idea that those handlebars are sticking out a little bit versus like on mine where they do but nowhere near as much so i like to put them to where these two things come together because the bike's not going to move much further in this way so if they go like that then that kind of protects the handlebars so the other kicker is they are a little over 60 pounds with the battery in you do lose about seven ish pounds when you add the battery um, so if you transport it with the battery and just know it's going to be 64 ish give or take um, so lifting this to up here if you can't lift 64 pounds don't do this i can so i do it and then on top of that they are just a little cumbersome that's it let's go back to the rig Well, now that we're back to the rig, there's a couple different versions of how we would do this. If we were staying here, I'd probably pull the bikes out, go ahead and fold them back open, and then we would just stash them somewhere around here, and these bins would get stacked and probably put in the back of my truck and locked up. If we're not gonna do that, so we're actually getting ready to head out, and because of that, we're gonna go into transit mode, which the back's kind of already halfway there. Um, we will leave them directly into this bin and just move them over. All right, let's head inside and we'll show you what we do now. Now we're back inside a tour hauler space. You can see we're kind of ready for a little bit of a trip. Um, the desk is put away, the grill's inside. So this isn't exactly where I would store them, but uh, it has to stay like this for the next three or four days. So we're going to leave it like this so that Lauren can function back here, still get to the dog food. So as you can see, there's golf clubs and a travel bag and a suitcase. So a little hint to what's coming next. Um, but as soon as we get back, we are taken off. So because of that, we wanted to go ahead and get these reasonably situated. Typically what I'll do in transit is I'll take the dog bed and I'll flip it up and I'll push them against the wall there. And then I'll use the center track and the outside track and put a strap over them that way. So when we do that, that'll hold them down nice and firm, but it still gives us enough space to walk around them, get to the washer dryer if we need to, and to get to the dog food and everything else. So we try to maintain as close to normal back here, short of using my office space as we possibly can. So, ta-da. All right, well, I know that's a quicker, quick shot video, if you may. Mm -hmm. uh, we're excited because we do have a few adventures that we're getting ready to gear up for. Mm -hmm. Most with the RV, as normal. <laughs> Some without. Wait, wait, nudge, nudge. <laughs> hint, hint. Uh, but get out, enjoy something. I can tell you, we absolutely love these electric bikes for the shorter period of time we've had them. Yeah. So you will see them throughout the videos now, mm -hmm. and we will update you as we go whether we like them dislike them i know electric has some new stuff coming out and they've mentioned that we may be able to get to try it so um they do have a bunch of different bikes so if you don't want something foldable maybe you want something more traditional mountain bikey mm -hmm. they have a bike called the x-peak so check that out i did get to ride one of those though were pretty yeah, fun exactly we did not get that for my safety <laughs> well that and we don't have nowhere to put them but other than that sure so they didn't fold so didn't meet one of lauren's criteria mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do want to purchase some electric bikes, uh, it would help us out if you click the code down below mm -hmm. and uh, go through that little stage because uh, they we do get a little bit of love from them if you buy from them. So we would appreciate it. And you may get some free accessories or a discount, uh, whatever it is they're running at the time. Yep. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye, Mom.